Let's take it to the beginning. Before we get to your company, Pigeon League, where'd you grow up? What was your circumstances like, you know, from the very beginning? Are you from a two-family household? Um, you know, were, were you guys well off? Do you come from the suburbs? Do you come from the inner city? What did your upbringing look like? Yeah, so I was born in um, Brooklyn, New York, um, on Flatbush Avenue. And then when I was about 13, um, my mother moved us to St. Petersburg, Florida, because that's where she's originally from. That's where her side of the family was at. So my mom and dad had been separated um, um, for my entire childhood. So it was just, all I knew was just my mom. And one of the things that stuck with me, you know, as growing up is I just always saw and um, – it was, it was normal for me to see her ability to make ends meet and to take care of us because I have three other siblings. So it was normal to see her, you know, working multiple jobs and doing side jobs and, you know, she would do catering on the side. And so it was normal for me to see um, her make ends meet to take care of us. Um, so it wasn't until I got older where I realized that my reality wasn't necessarily everyone's reality growing up. And, you know, us just learning, you know, me learning, and my siblings learned just to be content with what we had, you know, at a young age. I mean, we grew up in a one bedroom and it was all four of us. So, you know, it, it was one of those things where, where for me, you know, as a child, it felt normal because it's all you knew. But it's not until you get older where you really could have a level of appreciation above and beyond when you, when you realize, you know, you know, you know, for me particularly, like how my mother really took care of us and held it down, you know, growing up. Got you. You you said your mom and dad weren't together. Did you have a relationship with your dad, though? Yeah, so I, I built a relationship with my dad more so as an adult. Um, they were divorced um, before I was born. Um, and um, towards, towards, as, far as, I got, as I got older and, you know, leaving, leaving the house, um, you know, in my teens, um, that's when I started to get more relationship. What's funny in this story is that my mom and dad ultimately ended up getting back together. They're together now. So Are you serious? Kind of, yeah, yeah. They, 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 it's gone full circle. So, um, so, you know, my relationship with my dad was something that was built of us, you know, more so me being an adult versus being a child and growing up with, with, with the dad around. Got you. Before we move too far in the story, just in terms of your family dynamic, your family background, we know, I believe the statistics, and you might know it a little better than I do, one in every three black males will enter the system at some point in their life. Is this something that has plagued your family before you entered the system? Or are you kind of the, the, the black sheep of the family, if you will, that your family was upstanding, but you were the one who kind of got off track and made it into the system? Yeah, so um, a little bit of both. So amongst my siblings, I'm the only one that, that has ever gotten in any real trouble. Um, so I'm definitely the black sheep in that side. But, you know, when it comes to my cousins and uncles, it, it would be crazy because I remember as a child saying, hey, where's such and such? And they'd be like, oh, he's gone. Or they, the joke would be, oh, he's at college. And then they would laugh at me because I would believe it because I was a kid. I didn't know. Um, but he really was locked up. So <laughs> it, it, it just was one of those things where, you know, I, you know, a lot of my uncles I would see come in and out, cousins see come in and out. And, you know, in, in St. Petersburg at that time, so St. Petersburg at, back then was very segregated. Like most of the white people lived on the north side and most of the black people lived on the south side. Um, and it was just a lot of crime and, 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 and illegal activity going on. And the more, at least in the neighborhood that I was in, you know, the main economy was the drug economy. That was the main economy, you know, at that time. So um, it was normal. It was normal to see, you know, heavy police presence. It was normal to see people getting locked out and getting back out or posting bond like that. That was, that was a normal. But then again, it's not until you get older and you get into other areas where you realize that's not fucking normal, right? So right. It, you don't notice it until you're outside of it. Um, but for me growing up, you know, it was what I knew. It was what I saw. So it was nothing to see my cousin being chased by the police and driving his car up on my grandma's yard and jumping out and running. I mean, that's, you know, we saw it all the time. So um, it was just one of those things where it was just, you know, the, 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 the environment that I was in and those turned into my role models. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't someone who, you know, my, my images of success, you know, was really two people, you know, as I was growing up. One was my uncle who, 
you know, he always had the nice car and stuff like that. And he was in the Air Force, which was different. But then everybody else was my cousin's uncles who was hustling. And it was just in the streets. And they had even nicer cars and, and clothes and jewelry and girls and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, those, those became my images of success growing up. And, you know, it really, it really swayed my view of, you know, what I wanted to do. Because the people that I saw, you know, doing the quote unquote, you know, school or other stuff, I didn't necessarily see them with the lifestyle that I felt was appealing. So um, it wasn't really attractive. Um, so, you know, it, it just, it, especially when you're young like that, it can be very impressionable on you, you know, at that age. No, nah, absolutely. And, and it's, you know, it's so sad because coming from these impoverished neighborhoods where the options are few at best, yep. you know, when you're young, the people who are getting money usually are not getting it legally. Right. So that, that story is just far too common. Talk to me, what, what type of student were you? Were you a great student? Were you above average? Were you below average? Did you finish um, high school? Did you go on to college? Yeah. I, I, I finished high school. School was easy for me. Like, I mean, I, I've, I've, I never had a problem, um, you know, learning. I never had a problem, you know, retaining information. And one of those traits that I think is a very entrepreneurial trait is that most entrepreneurs have the ability to learn exceptionally fast. You, you learn at a very fast rate. And I think that's a trait of every entrepreneur I know. Um, so in school, it wasn't something that it wasn't something that interests me. Where you know, I, I I never really considered going to college. I mean, I know everyone around me said, "Hey, this is what you're supposed to do," and it's just a pattern you're supposed to follow. But I never was interested in it. Um, so, but I did graduate high school without a problem. I was an A B student, um, and I wasn't even really really applying myself. Like, I mean, I was selling beat in school, so it wasn't like I mean, it was just like I had only because I had to go. My mother was not gonna let me go. So, you know, um, school was just one of those things. But it, again, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't something that I was, I wasn't big on sports. I didn't really do a lot of school activities because my focus outside of school was making money. That's what I was always thinking about. That's what my focus was. Um, so my extracurricular activities was always centered around that, whether it was back when you used to burn CDs off of LimeWire and Napster and sell mixtapes or if you was doing yard cutting grass or just whatever, car wash, whatever. My, my mindset growing up from middle school to high school was always just, you know, how to make money and how to grind. You know, it, you, you talk about something that it, it seems to be a thread through most entrepreneurs. Long before we discover that word entrepreneur, if we look back over the course of our life, all of us thought the same. Like, you know, because even as you're speaking, I'm thinking about myself. As we come up, Everything is a hustle trying to get money, whether it's cutting grass, paper routes, um, yeah. doing whatever you, selling whatever you can to get money. Is, is this something for yourself? And we're going to move the, the, the interview along. But did you identify yourself back then as an entrepreneur or did you have aspirations of being an entrepreneur? And I ask you this, number one, because the majority of our audience who watch this series or listen to it in podcast form, they're entrepreneurs and they're listening in because they want to get information and gems from people like yourself who's been successful at it. But I know most of us are taught conformity. Most of us are taught go, it's, it's only one way to the finish line, which I completely disagree with. So, is it for you looking back did you always want to be an entrepreneur did you always know i wanted and I, I might not know what the business is but i one day i want to own my own business or were you just a natural born hustler yeah i think i think for me it was really about i seeing problems and being new and then me understanding at an early age that if i fix someone's problem they're going to be more than happy to pay me for it and, and I think that's as far as I thought about it. It's like, okay, well, you know, you don't have, you have slow internet speed, but I have better internet speed. And if you want to download this music, you can't download it. I can download, I can sell it for $5. I solved your problem, I'm going to make $5 off of it, right? So that, that's, that's, that's as far as I went with it. It's just that, you know, if I solve someone's problem, they will pay me for that solution. And, and I think that's all entrepreneurship is. It's just a series of, of, of problem solving and you know, when you solve a problem for someone, or if you solve a problem for a great number of people, that's more than you know. They're, they're more than willing, not only more than willing to pay you for it, but you know, that's 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 definitely a path to you know wealth and revenue and, and so on. And then every, all the things we use every day are literally just solutions to 
different problems or enhance or you know improvements to to you know different problems or, or situations so it was that simple for me no you're absolutely right that's what the basis of being a successful entrepreneur is solve somebody's problem period <laughs> What's up guys, thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.